I'd like to call the, call the meeting, regular meeting to order uh, for the District of Chetwin at 4.31. And I need to call to order the opening statement. As we begin our meeting this evening, we reflect on the service we provide to our citizens and we will endeavor to conduct our business effectively and productively on their behalves. Thank you. Okay, right now I need a motion to uh, bury the agenda. We've got a couple of uh, people that uh, missed the hearing, so they want to uh, express their views. Can I have that motion? So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Okay, carried. This public hearing is being convened pursuant to section 464 of the Local Government Act in order to consider the proposed bylaw. District of Chetwin Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 1097-2019, uh, the area 5000 and 5040 North Access Road. At this public hearing and persons present who believe that his or her interest in party is affected by the proposed bylaw shall be given the opportunity to, to be heard on the matter contained in the proposed bylaw. However, it is important that all who speak at the meeting restrict his or her remarks to matters contained in the bylaws and it is my responsibility as chair of this meeting to ensure that all remarks are so restricted. Those of you who wish to speak on the proposed bylaw should at the appropriate time, direct your address to the council by clearly stating your name and address. Then you may give us the benefit of your views, concerns, and proposed by, uh, concerning the proposed bylaw. Council may, if, if so, wish, ask questions. However, the main function of the council is to listen to the views of the public. It, it is not the function of the council at the public hearing to debate the merits of the proposed bylaw with individual citizens. Everyone who deems their interest is in property to the affected, sh to be affected shall be given the opportunity to be heard at this meeting. No one should be or should feel discouraged or prevented from making their views known. After the public hearing is concluded, the council may, without further notice, give whatever effect is it believes proper to the representatives made at this public hearing. Okay, is there anybody from the public that has anything on this uh, bylaw? Is it Brock? Yep. Any any concerns? We should uh, be let know. Name. Okay. Is that? Uh, yeah. Let's uh, get to the podium there. Yep. Thank you. 
that's why we're here, Dave. Okay, that's why we're here to, to listen at this public hearing. Anyone else? No, this is just for the public hearing on the, on the property 5,000 and 5,040. That's okay. Does council have any questions to the public? Before closing this hearing, I'm going to call three times for any further speakers on any of the matters contained in the proposed bylaw. For the first time, is there any who wish to make any further representation? For the second time, is there anyone who wishes to make any further presentation? Were to speak on the matter, Dave, like if uh, you had your say, I'm just go through it three times here and then once that, then, then it's done. Then the public hearing's over. For the third time, is there anyone who wishes to speak, who wishes to make any further presentations? There being no further speakers, I declare this public hearing closed. Thank you very much for your submissions. So we need a motion to adopt the agenda or is there any new uh, business? So moved. Second. Okay. Favor? Gary? Okay, minutes. April 15th meeting. Motion to receive. Second. Gary? Minutes of the public hearing held on April 15, 2019. Motion Done? to receive. Okay. Yeah. Okay, delegations. Mark, Alexander, Sabrina. And how do you pronounce your last name, Sabrina? Le Cicero? Okay. Great. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for having us uh, here today. My name is Sabrina Le Cicero. I'm with BC Hydro's Peace to Kelly Lake Capacitors Project. Let me know if this is too loud, but um, we're here today, I'm here today with the project manager, Mark Alexander. We're going to give you an update on the project. Um, so it's the Peace to Kelly Lake Capacitors Project. It was announced about a year ago, last spring, 2018. Um, in about June 2018, we were before Council just introducing the project and what would be happening in the region. It, it covers a large area, and you'll see that in a moment. So over the past year, we have continued to carry on our studies, and we identified a leading alternative for the project in March of this year, and that was a letter to Council as well. So we wanted to provide an update on what's been happening with the project, what the leading alternative means for this area, and, uh, and then open it up to questions. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mark, who will take you through the presentation. Thanks. Thanks, Sabrina. Thanks for having us here today. And uh, we just want to give, uh, as Sabrina says, a bit of an update on the on the project, um, what we've been doing, uh, how we went about and picked the leading alternative, and we'll highlight the the work that we we see going forward in the next the next stage of the project. So the project itself is the Peace to Kelly Lake Capacitors Project. It's to address capacity limitations we have in the transmission network that connects the Peace region down to the rest of the system, which in this case runs all the way down to the Kelly Lake substation near Clinton, BC. That transmission capacity is sitting at about 95% now, today, and as we add more and more resources to the system and, uh, and the load in the system increases, we need to invest in that transmission infrastructure and provide that capacity upgrade. So the project will, will provide that capacity upgrade and it will provide for, uh, for improvements to aging assets we've got in various locations in the system. 
the, the project area itself is quite uh, significant. It, it ranges right up for, to, from Hudson Hope all the way down to Clinton, BC. So what is a capacitor station? A, a capacitor station looks much like a, any substation would that BC Hydro runs and operates, and there's many around here in the region. A capacitor station, uh, again, looks, looks pretty much the same. It has a bit of a different function, though. It provides uh, voltage support directly to our transmission lines. So as, if you're walking by, it looks like a, a substation, but its role is to provide that voltage support to transmission lines, and it allows us to get more power through those lines. And uh, in order to increase transmission capacity, we've, we've pretty much got two alternatives. One, one is to build new lines, and the other one is to, is to add more capacitors to our existing lines. So we see it as a real way to get the capacity upgrades we need and, uh, and really maximize the um, efficiency we get out of our existing assets. So when we came here last year, we talked about three alternatives the project was looking at, uh, named alternative one, two, and three. Um, in, all, in all alternatives, we are looking at adding capacitors to the existing transmission infrastructure. Uh, we've got, in alternative one, we looked at adding four new capacitor stations. There would be two located between Prince George and Hudson Hope, and two located on the southern segment between Prince George and, and Clinton, BC. And in alternative one, we would decommission our existing capacitor stations. We do have some existing ones on the line. There's one near Kennedy Lake, which is near the Mackenzie Junction, and there's one in the southern part at McLeese Lake, which is a, a little north of uh, Williams Lake. In alternative in two and three, we looked at ways where we could keep our McLeese Lake capacitor station operational. We've got a, a good, healthy asset there that we think we've got some, uh, some life left in it. So in alternative two and three, we're looking to keep McLeese. So the alternatives, uh, in alternative two and three, the northern segment looks much the same. We've got two new stations between here and Prince George. And in the south, in alternative two, we'd add some capacitors at our Williston substation in Prince George, and we'd keep McLeese alone. Uh, in alternative three, we make some modifications at McLeese, and we add a third capacitor station. So essentially, our alternatives look like four new capacitor stations, uh, two new capacitor stations in alternative two with some additions at Williston, and three new capacitor stations in alternative three. So this is what we spent the last year looking at. And, uh, and we, in early in the spring, have uh, determined that alternative three is the leading alternative that we think best suits our needs and, uh, and, and the project objectives. And how we determine that is to look at a structured decision-making process where we look at all the sort of up objectives of the project and categorize those to... Hello. <laughs> I think the mic... Uh... Is it on? There we go. Sorry, I must have bumped something. Um, so uh, we look at all the various objectives and, and determine which one is the leading alternative. So in alternative uh, one, because it had the, uh, the highest footprint, it had the most impact to the, to the land, which is something we look at very carefully, as well as to potential stakeholders and First Nation interests. So alternative two and three were certainly attractive or more attractive from that scenario. The other one we looked at really carefully was the flexibility that the, the alternatives gives us to, as an oper in our operations, as well as, the, um, as well as the restrictions that some of the alternatives give us. And the one to highlight here is an alternative two. Uh, we did have a, a 400 megawatt generating restriction, where in some, in some certain scenarios, the, the McLeese capacitor station would cause us to have to restrict generation on the system by up to 400 megawatts. And that represents about 150,000 homes, so it's a fairly significant restriction. Uh, so alternative two didn't quite meet the project objectives, and that certainly factored into our evaluation. The other one that we like for alternative three specifically is the flexibility it gives us. There's a lot happening on the system right now, with, uh, particularly with oil and gas investment and potential LNG loads. And as we see the potential, if there is more LNG loads, we, we would have the, the opportunity to perhaps reduce our capacity upgrades. We may not need as much upgrades, particularly in the southern segment, and alternative three gives us the flexibility to do that. We could scale back the alternative quite readily if there was new load to the system. In addition to all these, we look at the environmental impacts, archaeological impacts, as well as our constructability and uh, scheduling, and of course, the cost impacts of the projects. So once we went through all those alternatives or reviews, uh, we, we did land on alternative three as the leading alternative to move forward. 
So, uh, so alternative three is building three new capacitor stations, uh, two in the north here that we'll look at a little bit closer and one in the southern segment. And, uh, and we see that as the, 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 best, the best alternative to meet the project requirements. So where are the stations be located? Um, the stations themselves will be located primarily on the existing right away. Uh, the stations are about four to six hectares in size. They, they are big stations. There are 500 kV lines, so they do take up a significant amount of space. And there's three lines that we're providing uh, series or capacitors to. However, uh, about 60% of that will be located on the existing right of way. So uh, we, we, the, the station will be located essentially under the existing lines, and we, we can, we're hoping to maximize the footprint uh, that we can get onto the existing right of way. So the, this, we've broken the areas into segments. Uh, segment A is the one in the north that is closest to um, here in Chetwin. Uh, originally, we looked at uh, this area in red, which is right through the Pine Pass. Um, we were never very excited about that area. And uh, we did, after some, a lot of looking in that particular location, we did add a second segment, which is a little bit further north in the Lamore region. And this is the one that we're going to focus our efforts on. We've got two potential sites there that look really good, and we'll be doing some further investigations too. Segment B is located north of Bear Lake, um, so we're down south of the Mackenzie Junction now, and uh, and we've got two really good candidates there as well. That's a, a real prime spot that looks looks to be well suited to these stations. And in the south, we've got two areas similar to Segment A. One of them is in the Cottonwood River area north of Quinell. And the other one is just south of Hickson, which is likely where we'll focus our efforts on going forward. We also want to highlight that there is a significant amount of work in the project at our Williston substation, which is a major substation in Prince George. It, it, it'll require an expansion to accommodate some new equipment there. So a, a, a big amount of work at that facility as well. So what are we doing next? Well, this, this next phase is really focused on uh, confirming the leading alternative is the right one to move forward and finalizing where these stations are going to be located. So to do that, we're going to get out in the field. Uh, we've got an intensive field investigation program starting right now and running through the summer. Uh, a, big, a big piece of that will be our geotechnical investigations so we can determine what's under the, what's under the ground and, uh, and what kind of uh, construction techniques we need to develop any of these sites. We'll also be doing surveys. We'll be doing ground resistivity measurements. And we'll be doing a lot of environmental field studies, as well as archaeological impact assessments. And we'll roll all that together in a similar review of, that we did to pick an alternative to pick the sites that we want to move forward with. And we're really hoping to do that by the end of this year. And the, the overall project timeline, um, if, we can, if we can meet those objectives for this summer and this coming year, then we should be in good shape to identify what we call the preferred alternative uh, early in 2020. And that's when we're convinced that that's the, that's the real the next path forward. And that's when we'll be preparing our regulatory submission. The project does need to go to the BCUC for approval. We're targeting an, uh, an application process in summer of 2020. And based on all this, we'd be looking at an earliest construction date starting in around summer of 2021. And uh, in the completion, it's a fairly significant uh, undertaking to build these stations, and we've got potentially up to three of them. Uh, we're looking at a completion for late 2025. So uh, we're still early on in the project, but uh, definitely happy to get to this next stage and really looking to get out and, uh, and, and see if we can't finalize these properties where these locations will be best suited. So on that note, the consultation and engagement piece is still a real critical piece to us. So meetings like this, as well as local property owners and first nations to get feedback into, uh, into their thoughts on the impacts of these potential stations. So I think that's pretty much what we had to cover here today and, and do have a few minutes for questions if, if there are any. I do have just one quick question. If you can just on, on slide um, segment A slide, um, like you have site 82 kilometers, 82 kilometers from where? where where's the starting point? Yeah, that's good. Uh, the, the starting point is, uh, is zero kilometers at Hudson Hope. Oh, so, okay. so yeah, we, all of our structures and lines are, are characterized as the, the kilometer marker. So, um, so Hudson Hope South, um, the, the end of the line would be about 330 kilometers in Prince George. 
So we're about 82 kilometers from the start of the line. That's, how, that's, that's, the, that's the name we've given these sites. That's good, uh, good observation because it looks pretty much meaningless to anybody outside of hydro. So. I have one question. Uh, <clears throat> with uh, uh, our uh, workforce being quite uh, diminished right now, everybody seems to be working in the coal mine and uh, on site C, and uh, you guys restoring other things in your uh, 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 BC Hydro. How, how are you uh, looking to fill the positions to do these uh, upgrades or building a whole new capacitor station? Yeah, it's, um, that's a good question. It's something we're looking at real closely even now. It's identified as a, a key risk to the project is, is the construction resources to build it. Um, there are potentially three stations. They're, they're big stations. They will need a lot of resources, a lot of skilled resources ranging from clearing and access works to um, site preparation, as well as their standard civil and electrical construction, and some specialty trades too. These are unique stations and, and do require some specialty skills. So um, general construction resources are, are gonna be in high demand. Uh, we expect them to be, and, and we'll need those on the project. So um, we're something we're, we're definitely looking at, and it's, it's, a, it's a project risk that we're, we're looking at, and we'll have to watch the markets, how they, uh, how, how the work goes over the next number of years as we look to the start of construction. But um, Chetwin we see as a potential good base of, uh, of uh, some of those construction activities, particularly this northern segment in the Lemoria region, which isn't, which isn't too far from here. It, uh, it, um, it, whether it's Chetwin or McKenzie, it, it, either of them would make a really good uh, base of operations for the, that construction work. I do have a question, Lord. Uh, so in regards to the accommodating the personnel, are you looking at utilizing local accommodations or worker camps? At the moment, we expect we can fulfill the requirements through local accommodations. Uh, we don't have any plan for worker camps, and again, that's something we'll have to watch carefully to see if that changes. But um, we're, not, we're not talking of thousands of workers. Uh, they are big sites, but we're, we're probably in the you know, 70 to 100 workers is probably a peak at these sites. Um, and we think that the local um, local accommodations can can support that. Any more questions? Good. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much. Very much. Yep. Thank you, Mark. And Sabrina. On to bylaws. Bylaw, it's B1, District of Chetwin Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 1097, 2019. Uh, the address is 5000 and 5040 Access, North Access Road requires third reading and adoption. Motion to move for a second and third reading and adoption. Correct? Go ahead. Go ahead, staff. Um, this bylaw was already given first and second readings, okay, so, so it just needs. Just thank you. Um, however, if you want, yeah, go ahead. That's great. Thank you. So, motion to move third reading and adoption. Second that. Questions? I just, I just wanted to say that um, a condition of the sale of this property is that it be rezoned by the end of May. But if council has doubts about the land use, that's really what this question is about, whether this is a good use of that land. If, if council has doubts about it, you could just do nothing with the bylaw, the sale will fall through and we can look for other purchasers. Go ahead. Uh, Wait, Clay. Just a, a, like a few comments. Um, as far as the, the concerns from, from the public on this matter here, as far as the council goes, it's, I don't think that it's really our job to uh, consider the viability of an individual business uh, coming into town, whether it's a good business or a bad business. It's a matter of does it meet the zoning requirements? And can they pay the property taxes? And can they obtain a business license? I know in some towns they have limits on certain types. 
of um, licenses in certain types of businesses, but we don't have right now maybe something to consider in the future. But I do have uh, a question on, it seems like the, the main difference between um, town, town center and highway commercial is the use of a, a service station. And I know we have two previous uh, lots that have been service stations in the past. How does that affect the sale of those properties today? You know, what has to be done environmentally? Does the fact that a service station and occupying a piece of land, does that hinder its use in the future? Go ahead, Steph. It does because it has to be reclaimed. So that piece of property was already reclaimed and decontaminated to Ministry of Environment standards, so it's now clean. So when a surface station or if a service station goes back in that land, it will be contaminated once again. Any more questions on this? Well, I do reading? have a question. I'm looking at our zoning map, actually, and um, can you just tell me what the difference between C1 and C2 is? Should I go ahead? Go ahead, Steph. Yep. So C1 is, is mostly for commercial, so that's for all the retail stores that are, that are downtown right now. It's to sell wares. And C2 is highway commercial, so it allows for a service station and uh, convenience stores, restaurants, that sort of thing. Okay, so I have another question for you. Okay. On, on the map, none of them, them lots are zoned according to this map, and I'm a little confused. Which, which lots? Um, I'm looking at our bylaws um, on our website. Oh, okay. And I just noticed that, because um, C1 is IGA, but in front of it, it's not zoned. Or maybe it is, and I'm just reading this wrong. Not that it really matters, Carol, mm. because it'll be, like you said, it must be a zone to C1 right now? It is C1. Yeah. Okay. And we're changing it to C2, right? That's the proposal. Right. Clear. The, the two lots in town that used to be service stations, they're uh, private and owned, right? Yes. Any more questions on the third uh, I reading? I just want to state, if, um, uh, all of the businesses along the highway are all C2, right? Most of them. Most of them are already C2. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Mel. The uh, two lots, the, per, there's, there'd be three. Um, she, the old Chevron, the Texaco, and the Petro Canada. Do, are, are they, have they all been cleaned up or remediated? Go ahead, Stan. Dave, uh, it's not public right now. We're we're debating. Okay, Carol, do you have something on that? Yes, as, uh, <clears throat> as we stated before, that we don't own the businesses, so that would be a different, uh, uh, <clears throat> if they're privately owned, then they, if somebody goes to buy them, then they're uh, in deal with that uh, owner. Any more questions on the third reading? We had some information put to us by staff. You guys are all familiar of what we can and can't do. Okay, third reading. All those in favor? Carried. And opposed for that? Any, any counselors opposed? Nope. I don't see any, so it's carried unanimously.
So we need a motion to uh, adopt that bylaw. Sorry, it's separate. Rochelle yeah. said. Okay. I'll make that motion to adopt that bylaw then. Second. And I'll second it. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Yeah, we done it already, you bet. Okay. All those in favor? Carry. All those opposed? Any community reports? Regional, district? Nothing from you, Mel? No. Good. Yep, that's fine. We're, we're good. Mayor's report. Uh, he was gone for a, a month. Okay, discussions, letter to district of Tumbler Ridge. Do we have that letter? Just uh, that information? Okay. So we need an adoption for travel. A motion. I'll make that motion that council authorize all members of council to attend the 2019 Northeast British Columbia Community Coal and Energy Forum in Tumba Ridge on September the 11th and 12th of this year. Okay. All those in favor? Carried. Correspondence. I'll make that motion that we receive the correspondence for information. Second. Any discussion? Anybody see anything in there? Good. All those in favor? Carried. What's this see? Uh, information. information item C2. I'll make that motion to receive uh, information item C1 through 3. Yep. Any discussion? Carried. Motion. All in favor of the motion? Carry. Action reports. Policy review and update. I can make that recommendation. Um, that the retirement farewell gift policy be adopted as amended and that the recognition award and farewell gifts committee community policy be adopted as amended. I'll say. Any discussion? Um, I think it's a great idea that we're including the firemen. Um, I think it's really important if a fireman retires with Chetwind, I think it's important to recognize. We actually had one a couple weekends ago that um, I don't know if we recognized him. I know at the, at the supper he wasn't recognized on behalf of the District of Chetwin, but um, I think, think it's um, a great thing. And I'd like to say in that case it would probably be retroactive. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm, like, I'm really not sure what, um, if we did anything or not. Um, it wasn't done anything at the Is that supper. a friendly amendment, Mel? Okay, we, we've got an amendment. Let's uh, make that. Okay, seconded. We're talking on the amendment to a uh, friendly amendment to retroact retroactive the uh, past retiree from the Chetwin Fire Department. And, and we'll get a name later. Good. Okay, uh, any discussion on the, on the amendment? Um, they had his party, what was the last weekend, Rochelle, was the last weekend? Yeah, it was Dennis Walker. You could say April 1st, would that cover it? What do you think, 
Yes, I, I agree. Let's go April 2nd. I don't like April 1st. 20 years. April 2nd, Mel? Retroactive to April 2nd? That's the amendment. Good. All those in favor of the amendment? Carried. Okay, back to the motion. All those in favor? With the amendment? Carried. <clears throat> R2. Cannabis retail store license. I would make that motion that council authorize a public input opportunity during the regular council meeting on June 3rd, 2019, beginning at 4.30 p.m. with regard to the application of Dirk Cannabis Ventures Limited for retail cannabis establishment at 4728 52nd Street and that council provide comments for submission to the LCRB. Period. I'll second that, but I do have a question. Okay, we got a secondary question. Just, so that meeting would take place at 4.30 and not 4 p.m. as a, any other different public hearing? Okay, thank you. Correct. Go ahead, Mel. Does it go to a public hearing after that? Th that is the public hearing. Okay. Staff, we'll, we'll refer to, st we're gonna refer to staff on this one. So we don't actually need a public hearing for this, uh, oh. Oh, gotcha. Would that be June the 3rd? June the 3rd. Correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 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 I can make that recommendation that the council, uh, that the council of the district of Chetwin approve all statements and schedules included in this statement of financial information produced under the finance, Financial Information Act. Second. We have a second or any discussions? All those in favor? Carried. R4, Community Wildfire Protection Plan Grant Application. I would make that motion that uh, Council instruct uh, administration to implement the following in conjunction with the Community Wildfire Protection Plan, items 1 through 12. I'll second that. I have a question on that one. Any discussion? I do, I have a question. Um, so one of the things is to raise the awareness of elected officials as to the resources requiring that. H how would that happen? Staff. This is part of the Community Wildfire Protection Plan grant for a study that we applied for already, so they, the government has asked us for more information. So that would be, um, through uh, reports and verbal reports from the fire chief that he would provide to council about um, the importance of wildfire planning and which he has done in, in the form of reports in the past. So I think the, the province just wants to make sure that the elected officials are kept in the loop when it comes to the importance of interface protection be, between the community and potential wildfires. Any more questions, discussion? All those in favor? Carried. Seeing, not seeing any reports for information, no new business. Do we have any uh, questions from the public at this time? State your name. April Barnettson, I live at 6385 Wildmere Sub. I'm here to address the um, David Durr Cannabis Retail Outlet. Um, um, 
I'm here to speak uh, in regards to Mr. Durr's application for a non-medical dispensary in Chetwind. Mr. Durr, in the location that he is intending to do business, is not compliant in any way, federally, provincially, or within the town's boundaries. Uh, and the regulations set forth by the Liquor and Con Cannabis and Control Act specifically in regards to being no less than 800 meters away from places or areas where children or young people of under the age of 19 may be present, i.e. Don Titus School, which I GPS this myself this morning, is 290 meters. The park is 294. The Tansy Childhood Development Center is 230 meters. The Pomeroy Pool and Slide, which is rented for special occasions, children's birthday parties, etc., is less than 100 meters. Mr. Durr should not be considered at this, at this time due to his compliance issues. And those are right to a federal level. 800 meters is the law. Okay, thank you very much. Any more public uh, questions? Okay, not seeing any. I will ask for adjournment. So moved. Okay, thank you very much.